In this episode, are we there yet? Candid camera taxi, 1,278 times cost of living. Let's get to it. In this video, I'm going to throw in some clips as I really wanted to get to the store. It's Christmas time, and I don't know, every so often, every once in a while, I get that old childlike desire to jingle bells and Rudolph, and I just got through watching A Wonderful Life, one of my favorite movies of all time. And it hit me this year. Didn't hit me last year, but it hit me this year. And I wanted to go to the toy store. And I want to check out what's going on with the toys. And of course, under the guise of, hey, Audrey, I'm thinking about getting something from Martin. You want to go with me and point out, you know, something? And it's like, yeah, and, and some truth to that. But honestly, I just wanted to get that feel of walking through the toy store and seeing everybody running around and playing with the toys and I was just kind of wanting to imagine myself with a Nerf gun and having a Nerf war and okay so and so I'm trying to go and I, I'm ready I'm showered, dressed, I'm ready to go and I'm waiting for Audrey so are we ready to go yet? ready? Three? Three. Yeah. Not two? Okay. Two? Okay. And I'm waiting for Audrey. Are we ready yet? No, yeah, yeah. Ten minutes. Ten, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah, ten About three hours later, I'm still kind of waiting for Audrey, even though she said she's ready to go. Are we ready to go yet? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So we go. On the taxi ride, this one's got a little TV set. Ecuadorian Candid Camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cracking her up. So we're at the mall, and it's a unique toy store in Cuenca. There's a lot of toy stores, but this one is specialized and it's got everything. Oh my God, is it crowded. It, it, the malls are crowded. Getting a taxi lately has been impossible. I waited an hour and a half the other night to, to get a taxi. And there's a number of times I've waited 20 minutes, 30 minutes for a taxi. It's been crazy. Everybody is out. Everybody is shopping. Get to the toy store. In these crowds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. In the mall, there's thousands and tens of thousands of people. Everybody is out spending money.
this everybody's so poor thing. I mean, come on. Come on. Now these Tories are 200 to 400% more here. But they're still getting bought. So do you think, do you think it's a little big? Yeah. <laughs> oh. I always get these messages but I've had a flurry of them lately and um, so I'm going to attack for the zillionth time cost of living it's impossible to give you the cost of living I can't do it what do you eat where do you live do you travel do you go out much do you own a car? Don't own a car? Do you live in the city or do you live in the country? Do you live in the suburbs? Okay, look, let's talk about rent. And we're going to do this as a single person. How much is rent in Cuenca? How long is the ball of string in my pocket? I mean, there's no way to know how much is rent. I can rent a room in Cuenca with a private bath for about a hundred, hundred and twenty dollars a month. I can rent a house for two hundred. I can rent a house for two thousand. I can rent an apartment, a couple hundred dollars. I can rent an apartment for thousands. You live on the river. Do you live in a penthouse? Do you have a big balcony? Do you live in a more traditional home? Do you live in a modern gringo North America style home? Do you live in the best neighborhood? Do you live in a nice neighborhood? You see, there's no way to tell you. Your cost of living could be $1,000 to $10,000 a month. Yeah, you could spend that here. So. Asking a cost of living is kind of crazy because there's so many variables about how you live, what your plan to live. I'll give you some tips though. Whatever lifestyle you've been living, that's the lifestyle you should plan to live. I see too many people that say, I'm gonna remake myself and I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna get back to nature and I'm gonna live rustic and I'm gonna become a vegetarian and I'm gonna nameho, renge kyo, krishna. Maybe you're gonna do that. Most likely you're gonna do that for a few months until you see how foreign that is to you and you're gonna fall back into your ways. As I mentioned one other, I like maple syrup. Maple syrup is, for a few tablespoons, $10. Do I use maple syrup? Nowhere near as much as I used to use maple syrup. You know, so you're gonna have some modifications to your behavior that'll be forced on you. But how you live in general is the way you should plan to live when you come here. And if you're sole guide is cost of living. This really isn't the place for you, not Cuenca. It may be in one of the outlying towns. Now, I'm gonna give you just kind of a 
brief summary of what you can plan on. Six, seven hundred dollars a month, you're going to live in abject poverty. And you won't get a visa because it's a minimum of eight hundred dollars. So forget that. So now can you live on eight hundred dollars? Barely. And you better know Spanish. So let's go to the next thousand dollars. Can I live on a thousand dollars? I could live on a thousand dollars. I would not be very happy. I wouldn't be going out. I wouldn't be buying the things that I'd like. It would be more of a subsistence living. That kind of sucks. Could I live on $1,200 a month? Well, that's $200 more. So maybe I could go out once or twice a month. Could I live on $1,500 a month? Yeah, I could have a nice apartment. I could go out once a week and I could splurge on a few treats that I'd like to have. I live on $2,000 a month. I live pretty nice. I live in a nice house. I have always lived in a nice place and I don't have a car, but I use public transportation. I use taxis, mostly taxis. If the Trambia were ever up and running, I probably would use that because I live pretty close. What is my long-term plan? It's going to be six months in Colombia, six months here, as I've mentioned that. I absolutely love Colombia and the cost of living, depending on where you are in Colombia, uh, where I plan to go, it's about 40% of the cost in Cuenca. That's Armenia. Now, if I were going to Medellin, it's probably 10 to 20% lower than in Cuenca. And part of that is in the, in the dollar versus Colombian peso. So that fluctuates. So your cost of living. Let's say that you come here on $1,500 as a single person and you can live pretty decent. Okay, that's great. What do you do in four years when inflation has kicked in and every year has jumped up five or six percent. It's going to get pretty tight. So again, if you're coming here because you think this is paradise, that you can live on $600 a month and live like a king, it's not true. If you think you can come here for $1,500 a month and live like a king, it's not true. You can have a nice living. But you need to stop focusing on this cost of living. Now, I know the situation. I understand there's a lot of people that have come to end of their work days and they're old enough to start drawing Social Security and their Social Security only is $1,500 a month, or maybe even less. I think the average is $1,200 or $1,300. So let's say your Social Security, that's it. And so you're looking in the United States where you live right now, and you think, oh my God, how am I going to do this? I don't want to eat cat food. I get you. I can understand. I can sympathize with that. But coming here isn't the answer. Going anywhere isn't the answer. You need, to, you need to look past just that instant cost of living. And the misconception here, because you can buy a zillion bananas for a penny, doesn't mean that's what everything is. Some things are 400% of what they cost in most places. So you, you don't even know the cost of living until you've lived here for a while and you start purchasing things that you don't purchase that often and you say, oh my God, I can't believe it costs this much. I do that all the time. It freaks me out. There's things that it's like, I just can't bring myself to spend that amount of money on some little thing that I know I could get through amazon.com in the United States for peanuts. But eventually you don't have much choice and you have to bite the bullet and you go spend a ridiculous amount of money for it. That's that's what you're facing when you come here or you go anywhere else. So what do you do if you're living on that small amount of money? Well, personally, if I were in that situation, I would look in the United States for a few reasons. You don't have to 
come up with the cost of visa. You don't have to come up with the cost of travel. You don't have to spend your first year wasting money that you shouldn't be wasting because you don't really understand the language or the culture. And so that overhead is thousands of dollars. In the United States, you don't have that overhead. And those thousands of dollars you could put towards something more tangible, more useful. So I would seriously consider, reconsider. In the United States, do your research, do your homework, and you can find places. It may not be the ideal place, but you can find places where you can live on that kind of money. It, and you understand the language and you know how to work around things. It's, there's really no learning curve. So if you're in New York and you want to go south because you don't want to pay heat bills, maybe you look at Arkansas and maybe you look in a more rural place in Arkansas because cars are cheap and easy in the United States as compared to here. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but there was a very cheap car and I'm going to skip the details, but Here's the flavor of it. Very cheap card that I looked at, and it was about $10,000 in the United States. So yeah, it's very, you know. In Colombia, it was $12,000 shipping. Here, it was $20,000. $20,000 for a $10,000 card. In the United States, you can find some beat up old runner for a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars that'll get you around. Here, the cheapest piece of crap is in the five thousand dollar range. So, if you're really pressed for money, stay where you are. You also have safety nets that exist. I mean, let's say that you only have so much money. I mean, there's food stamps, there's churches you can go to. I mean, if you really run into a bind, there's things that you can reach out and touch that will keep you going. You may have friends and family. None of that exists here. There's no safety net for you here. The safety net is whatever you bring. So cost of living get off the cost of living if that's your sole issue. Now I was talking to one person, talking as in emailing, and I was kind of stunned because they were concerned with the cost of living and it was a married couple. And um, I won't mention who, and we've had some very nice conversations. And he's looking at here and he's looking at Columbia and the more he talked, the more he was surprised about certain things here and health insurance and all kinds of things. And so finally I said, well, what kind of money are you looking at to retire on for a couple? Because he seemed really concerned. $60,000 a year. You know, it not only has Social Security and there's two of them, but there's pensions and 60,000, you can live well anywhere. You can live well in the United States. You can live well here. I mean, basically, take your pick. About the only place you might struggle is, a, is an economy like in Japan, perhaps. But um, I mean, the world is your oyster. You've done well. So stop worrying about the cost of living and start looking at the value of living a good life. And I don't think it's the best of ideas to be enamored with the idea of living in South America or any particular country or in Asia without really knowing the place. Unless you set aside several thousand dollars to make sure that you can always fly back and set yourself up, you know, if things don't turn out the way you expect. And I can almost guarantee that nothing you expect is what it will be. That doesn't mean it's going to be all bad, but there will be bad. I know you've been reading in the magazines and you read on the forum that everything is just paradise everywhere. 
no, it's not. And and for the group of what you, everybody's calling them snowflakes now that are in the United States and you're unhappy because you're watching the news and you're getting overly involved in politics and and you're freaking out and you say, oh, that's not my country anymore and I'm going to go somewhere else and it's going to be paradise. And it's, let me tell you, it's, it's really not the case. I like it here. I am here by choice. I choose to be here. I love Colombia. But I've traveled throughout my life and I've traveled to a lot of other countries. I've lived in a number of countries. So for me, that's just part of the deal. But for most people, that's not the case. And, you know, you've heard the grass is greener on the other side. And you get there and it's brown and dead. <laughs> okay, well, it's not brown and dead here. But... The United States, to, at the risk of sounding corny, is really one of the best countries in the world, even with all the problems and even with all the politics. And I can say that because I know that, not as a flag-waving blind patriot, but as a matter of fact. You know, as you live in under other countries, you really can begin to realize the value of a country like the United States. So don't be so anxious, don't be so rushed to bail and get somewhere else without really knowing what you're doing. And don't just get your information from these videos. I, I do my best to be straight with you, but, and certainly don't get them from forums on Facebook or forums like that because you will find every opinion in the world on there most of them are BS and you're going to gravitate towards the one that feels right to you that feels good for you doesn't mean it's true so I've done a bunch of cost of living I've also gone through and done lists of prices. I hope that you get by now that that's not really the way to make your decision. Get over here, check it out, and not for a week or two, spend some time. All right, I'll see you later. You know you're cool.